So ASA at the start, um, I'd say like the core of ASA, there's three um, like values um, or like pillars you could say. Um, the first one is cultural and then the second one is academic. But we're very focused on helping each other succeed academically. And then the last one is professional um, development um, and like basically having a strong network of Arabs um, in Northeastern. One of the goals is certainly just to bring that community together in the first place, just getting, making that known. And not only in Northeastern, but also in Boston. Like just recently, one of the things that we've been doing more of is just Arabs in Boston events. And another one's happening soon. And we're all super excited for it because now you're having a chance to meet so, such amazing people from amazing places. But the key word is not just amazing, it's different. And you're constantly learning about new things. And going into, you know, what the Arab culture is, I feel like that's what the Arab culture is all about, you know, just getting to know others, constantly learning about different things. And when you're doing this all the time, you're constantly growing as a person, not only just, you know, within the Arab community, but, you know, even beyond. And that's what we're all about. I was not part of the founding team. I, I did join as a member in the beginning, and I always found it cool, like coming from Morocco, that there was a community that, could, that I could seek to and find you know, friends and other people probably from the same places and even abroad. So it was definitely cool for me to have that community. And over time, like, you can definitely see how it's been growing. And now you know, by, by being part of the eboard, it does give you the chance to make that happen, to see out whatever you have envisioned for the club, to become that community and to grow even more, to connect people, because that's what it's all about at the end of the day. Before, it's, you, didn't, you didn't have that direct community, like sure, you definitely can meet others that are doing similar things, but now you have ASA, you know, that, that one central place where you can all just come together and keep learning from each other. So that's definitely one big thing about it. Um, bringing awareness to um, Arab culture and correcting any misconceptions that um, people might have, like I said, Yani, the first pillar is um, basically culture. And we tried to do that. Um, we had a cultural night, I think last year, spring 2018. And it was honestly really nice. Like we had different tables. Um, each, each country had a different table. And at the time we didn't even have members from every country, but we managed to reach out to the Northeastern community, even people that weren't involved in ASA. At the time, I don't think we had anyone from Jordan. And like we found people to, you know, do the table, like take charge. The attendance was actually pretty good. We had like 200 people there and at some point like we had music and some people starting doing the Debka and it started out with like four people and then it was like everyone. <laughs> but that was so nice. Like, we also had a belly dancer, which was really funny. <laughs> so we had a raffle and the guy who won it, he was Indian. And then like when he won it, he started the Debka and people started dancing, but it was so, so fun. We do like we do try to do that um, through our events and we always encourage non-Arabs to come and like we like especially with like our marketing and PR we're always like talking to different clubs on campus um, doing collab and we had a huge Zoom event called Arabs in Boston and we had like 70 people there so that versus the first event that we had which was only three people was very very nice um, and I think had we not had COVID that probably would not have happened like even on the call, we were all like, like, why didn't we not do this before? Like, why did we not have a huge event with all the Arab clubs in Boston? Like, it would have been very, very, like, successful. Glitch, you can very easily break out of it because you remember that every time you fail uh, and you stand up, every time you stand up, you're showing so many other women that it's, you know, you, you too can stand up, you too can fail and be absolutely fine about it. So this one, I'm very proud of it because, you know, I'm a feminist. Uh, uh, it's called Women in Business. So I reached out to three women entrepreneurs, um, like in the Gulf countries. Uh, one of them is Saudi. Her name is Maryam Musalli and she founded a fashion consultancy. The other one's from Oman. She founded um, a business. It's like Amazon, but like Oman version of it. And the third one, she graduated from Babson. Um, she founded her brand, it's called Claudette, and it's basically like streetwear. In the Middle East, we have the lowest female labor force participation. For the fact that we have three women 
leading businesses, like that's something great because if you don't really see role models, like women in, lead, in leadership positions, you're not really gonna have that encouragement to step in, to try. And I think just knowing that, oh, we actually have that, we have women doing amazing things and you know, maybe one day I can be a part of it or I can make their voices heard or I can do something like them or be even better, why not? Like we need to have that voice because I feel women back home have so much to give, but it's just that lack of space to do so. So if we can give them that, I think we can do something great.